Hello everyone, it is me, Mr. Lam, trying to teach some math on a Monday. So, today we're going to learn about finding the vertex through a vertex formula. So many of you are wondering, why do I need to do that when I already know how to find out the vertex from the vertex form? Well, today I want to tell you that not all of the equations that you see will always be written in vertex form. A lot of the times, uh, the equations that you see, the functions, will actually be written in standard form, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the a is still the same. You know, uh, remember if you have a is positive and then it will be an upward parabola. If a is negative, you have a downward parabola. If a is greater than 1, then it will be narrower. And then if a is between 0 and 1, then it will be wider. So all of that is still the same, but uh, right now we're going to introduce also b and c. So when it's written in standard form, then we need to have another way to find out the vertex. So to find the x-coordinate of the vertex and the axis of symmetry, remember they are related. Once you know the x value of the vertex, you automatically also know the axis of symmetry. You're now going to use this formula. So let's write this formula down. It is x equals negative b over 2 times a. Make sure you draw a box or, you know, do some firework. Do whatever it takes for you to make sure you memorize this. This is the most important formula for today. x equals negative b over 2a. This is how you find out the vertex, first the x-coordinate of the vertex, and also the axis of symmetry. So let's get started. We have our first example over here. So let's put that as example one. Given y is equal to 2x squared plus 8x minus 1, I want you to find the axis of symmetry and the vertex. So how would you do that? Well, the first thing that you want to do is to identify the a, b, and c. a, b, and c. And if you remember from the standard form, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So you have your a, b, c. These are the numbers. So you can just write them down. So a is positive 2, b is positive 8. Wow, you like my Asian 8 right there? Yeah, I like it. c is negative 1. After I identify my a, b, and c value, then we can utilize our formula. So we can substitute based on x is equal to negative b over 2a. So let's do that. So if x is equal to negative b over 2a, then we can substitute. Make sure you have negative first, and then substitute whatever the b value is. And for this problem, the b value is 8 over 2 times a, and the a value for this one is 2. So you basically have negative 8 over 2 times 2, which is 4, and now you get negative 2. So the x value of the vertex is negative 2. I'm going to write it somewhere down here, okay? So the vertex, we already know negative 2 is my x value. Now, I still need to find out the y value. But what I also want to tell you, and we kind of did that um, in the past already, as soon as you know the x value, the x coordinate of the vertex, you can automatically write out your axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Your axis of symmetry is based on the x value. And remember, you always want to write it as an equation because axis of symmetry is a vertical line. So it would be x it's equal to negative 2. So they are connected. So now I just need to find out the y value and I'll be good to go. How do I do that? Well, our most reliable friend, if I want to find out the y value, all I need to do is substitute. Because I know the x value, to find out the y value, I just need to substitute. So I know x is equal to negative 2, right? 
So all I have to do is to find out y is equal to 2 times, instead of x, we know x is negative 2. So instead of x, we substitute negative 2 inside, and then we'll find out the answer, minus 1. So let's uh, not forget about PEMDAS. So we make sure over here, we do not multiply these two first. Instead, we have to um, worry about the exponent. So negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2. That is 4. So that is 2 times 4. And then 8 times negative 2 is negative 16 minus 1. And then I'm running out of space, but uh, you can kind of continue. Y equals 8. 2 times 4 is 8 minus 16 minus 1. And finally, 8 minus 16. 8 minus 16 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 1, it is negative 9. So after you did all that work, it's just basic substitution work that you guys have been doing for a long time. You now have the y value. And now you have negative 9. There's your final answer right here. Some of you might be wondering, wait a second. If I'm only doing B and A, why is there a need for me to find out what C is? Well, in the next video, you will find out the importance of what C does. But right now, uh, let's just worry about the axis of symmetry and the vertex. Okay, so let's move on to the next problem. Okay. This time, I want you to try. So why don't you pause the video so you can try out this problem. First, you want to identify your A, B, and C, and then try to see how far you can get. So pause the video and uh, see how far you can go. Is this what you guys have initially? Let's take a look. So notice how it only has a negative, but we all know if you don't see a number in the front, then it means we really have 1 in the front as the leading coefficient. So a is negative 1, b is 18, c is negative 75. Don't worry, it looks like a huge number over here, but you're not doing much with it. So now let's go back to the formula, negative b over 2a. So negative times 18, and then 2 times negative 1. Make sure if a or b value has a negative, you transfer the entire negative inside the parentheses and then work on that. So negative 18 over here, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And then when you do negative 18 divided by negative 2, it should give you a positive 9. So as soon as I have the positive 9 over here, I'm ready to write down my vertex. So not all of it, but at least half of it. So let's do that. This time, let me write it on this side. So my vertex should be... 9 comma something. Okay, so we also know because of the x value of the vertex is 9, our axis of symmetry should be x is equal to 9. The last that we got to do to find out the y value is to substitute, oh man, that's 75. I don't know if I can subtract a number this big. Someone get me a calculator, okay? Go find that calculator. Okay. Miss Ruddy, can you hand me that calculator? Oh, damn, she's gone. All right. So without a calculator, I'm just going to try my best to do this problem. If I make a mistake, um, blame Miss Ruddy. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with y equals negative. And then the x value is 9. So we're going to substitute that 9 in there plus 18 times 9. Oh, dang, 18 times 9. What is that? Minus 75. My work is so messy. Miss Reddy's going to get mad at me. Okay, whatever. So remember about PEMDAS. PEMDAS is talking about parentheses and exponent first before you multiply with a negative. So you need to think about 9 squared. 9 squared over here is 9 times 9, which is 81. And 81 times a negative becomes a negative 81. Okay, 18 times 9, 18 times 9 is uh, 162. Okay, 162 
okay? If I got it wrong, then that's okay. And then we also have to subtract 75. All right, now you just kind of combine, add, and subtract. And if you're like me, you don't really know how to do that, then um, what I would actually do is to add these two numbers together first because they're both negative. So together, they actually make 156. So that's um, negative, positive 162 in the middle. And then the two together, the two negatives added together becomes 156. So really, at the end, you're doing 162 minus 156, and you should get y is equal to 6. So now that you have y is equal to 6, you can fill that in. That is the y coordinate of the vertex, and there you go. It looks like a huge problem, but it's definitely okay. So make sure you guys um, copy down the notes, and we're going to come back the following day to do some practice with the vertex formula. See ya!